Hello there, my name is Ismael, and welcome to another Blended Daily Tip. And uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, cloth simulation, particularly cloth sewing, uh, or just a way to dress up your characters in Blender 2.8. Yeah, so I have this guy here, nice looking guy, uh, no head, no anything, just a simple basic guy. And uh, what you may call a t-shirt here. Uh, so let's hit playback here and see what happens. Look at that. We are dressing him up. Uh, maybe a nice cowboy jacket here yeah so this is what we have and uh, this is the setup i want to show you obviously if you have a better model a better character model or whatever you want to dress up uh and a better i think it's called a sewing pattern uh, i did a google search here if you want to see how the different patterns you can just do a google search and uh, see how t-shirt patterns are made are created and uh, you can create the same uh, pattern yeah they're called sewing patterns i, th I think so Whatever shape of shirt or dress or trouser you want to you do you want to do you can just make other pattern maybe let's do that why not let me delete this and uh, let me find a t-shirt pattern you know what I think that's more than I would like to take on right now so let's just go with something basic uh, so that you can learn how to use the tool and. Uh, uh, yeah, do whatever whatever you want uh, to do with it. So let's just create a simple basic pattern here. So in pattern, I will uh, add a uh, seam there, a loop there in the middle, so that I can use uh, the mirror modifier. Uh, since since uh, cloth shirts and uh, trousers all have symmetry, I will can utilize the mirror modifier to create the pattern. Uh, I guess this can be our hand. Again, you can look at uh, the sewing patterns and uh, they should give you an, a good idea of how a t-shirt pattern would look. I don't want to keep it too complicated. I want something simple. So these subdivisions I'm adding in are for the close simulation to have some polygons to work with. And uh, so this is going to be the front. I think I can leave some space for the neck here. So for that, I'm just going to maybe Subdivide this. And I think we can do the same here. We just bevel this edge here. Hopefully, that doesn't disrupt uh, how the polygon flows, the topology flow of the cloth too much. So maybe you can add a loop there. And this into a face and uh, this let's see let's see let's see I think that's not too bad uh, I can get rid of this end gun here but uh, that's okay this is I'm not trying to keep make this too long so again this is the front uh, we just need to duplicate this shift D and push it at the back like that and uh, yeah, this is what we have. So then you can add in uh, the cloth simulation. Uh, obviously, because my timeline indicator is in the middle here, it just simulated it falling down. So yeah, let's play back again. You can see the cloth is just falling down, which is something we don't want. So we can go to the cloth settings and under field weights, turn off the gravity so that it's not falling down anymore. Now it will just hang in the air like that. Uh, but now to kind of see, sew it together, we need sewing lines. And uh, the way Blender works is that uh, if you select a, an edge like this and an, an, an opposite edge like that and hit F, that tells Blender that this edge here, this vertex here, is supposed to be sewed to this vertex. And uh, if you play back, nothing will happen until you go to the, uh, to the cloth simulation and uh, turn on sewing. So that's under shape. Go to the cloth, the, the physics tab, and then cloth, and then under shape you should see uh, the sewing. Turn on sewing, and uh, that should sew others' vertices together like that. Uh, right now we don't have a lot of polygons in our view. That's in our cloth. That's why you, you see it's uh, a bit faceted. And uh, yeah, so let's add a multi-resolution. Let's add a multi-resolution. Uh, modifier to kind of subdivide the mesh a bit so if we go to wireframe and uh, 
change this from cut mal to simple and subdivide this you can see we are adding a, a few more polygons in there it would work best if uh, the match resolution would work best if we have kind of even uh quotes here uh, but i'm not going to worry about too much worry about that too much so maybe i can join this with this and uh, maybe that may work better so that i remove uh, that end gone uh, maybe add a loop here join this like that and maybe connect this directly i don't know um, again you can be as perfect as you want in your own version but uh yeah so i think this is a better subdivision we are getting so let's play back this again and see look at that uh so we only have one sewing line uh, which is not enough so we can select this and this and also sew that by hitting f now you can see that's uh, connected but uh we don't have anything connecting the shoulder parts so let's connect these three vertices and you can see I'm, I'm minimizing the number of polygons I have in my mesh uh, because it, it makes uh, the job a little bit easier uh, when you have fewer vertices to sew. So I see we are getting a little bit better results now. Let me also turn on smooth shading. And uh, another thing I uh, can turn on is uh, uh, self collision for the cloth. Uh, so under, sh uh, under collision, uh, you can turn on self collision so that uh, the cloth itself doesn't can collide with itself and uh, avoid uh, intersecting the mesh intersecting so of course it's going to take a bit of time it's, it's going to take more computing power to do that so uh, be aware of that uh, so I think we can connect these two as well I uh, use F for that as well like that and I see how it kind of because the gap between uh, these is too high uh, if it's kind of like exploding and uh, kind of I don't know that's not explosion but uh, kind of ah, you can reduce uh, the under the shape under sewing you can reduce the maximum sewing force so that this doesn't kind of collide uh, with itself to with a uh, high speed so uh, if we increase if we give it a maximum sewing force uh, the default is zero, zero, which is no maximum force. It can go as high as infinite. So let's put it at one. You can see it's a bit slower, but that means that uh, it might start folding on each onto each other before it kind of collides uh, with the torso. Uh, so give it a, a a higher but not infinite sewing force. Let's try five. You can see it's not fast enough. Okay. Uh, still not it's, it's fast enough but uh, I think the space the dis the distance between these is too high so we can reduce that and get better results bam that looks better again uh, the final results will depend on the resolution of your mesh so you can subdivide this even higher uh, but again it will increase your computation power so let's play back this and uh, yeah, it's, look at the frame rate here. Two frames per second. Yeah, also I think now we can get rid of this. We can apply the mirror modifier. And uh, yeah, that happened. So let's... Sometimes if you start at uh, the time, if you play back from uh, from the end of the simulation the timeline and then and let uh, the simulation start again uh, it will resolve some of the errors you might see uh, when you just simulate from the middle here yeah so uh, this might take a while uh, you can see blender is not responding now uh, so that's yeah you, you know how to use the tool now I uh, whatever you use it for is up to you uh, I will end the tutorial here because blender won't go any further from here so thank you